Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to Stylus Meets Vinyl. My name is Chris. It's been a little while. Uh, I've been on a little bit of a hiatus with the channel. Not really intentional. It's just sort of the way that things happened. You know, it's summertime. I'm up here in Canada. I'm in the northern part of my province. Summer is short up here and I just, I'm trying to get the most out of it. Uh, we're traveling every weekend or we're at the cottage or I'm playing baseball twice a week and between work and all of this it's just there's been no time to make any videos and um I am I am here though with a video <laughs> and uh it is a thread from Craig over at the Spirit of Vinyl he's come up with this really cool thread actually I thought it was pretty fun so I wanted to jump in uh it's five questions the five questions are the uh you're going to show five records the first one is the record you've had the longest the second is uh, your oldest record. The third is the most like obscure or weird record that you have. The fourth is your rarest pressing. Kind of check Discogs and maybe see how many people have that pressing and how many people don't. And then lastly, your most expensive record. Pretty simple, five questions, five records. I thought it was pretty cool. I thought I'd jump in. So here we go. The first is, uh, okay, so the records you've had the longest. Now, I got into record collecting a little late in the game, maybe about 10 years ago. My parents, I got a collection from them and I got about 110 records in a row. So I'm not gonna, so those were like the first records I ever had. But the first real brand new in the shrink sealed record that I ever bought. I'm trying to remember which came first. It was, they were both very close and they were Metallica, Master of Puppets, followed by Bob Seger, Greatest Hits. It might've been Bob Seger first and then Metallica, but these were the first two very new, fresh albums that I ever bought and added to my collection. And I will never forget them. Uh, great albums too, by the way. And uh, okay, so next is the oldest records in your collection. Now, um, I'm I'm unsure completely whether these are originals or if they're or if they're reissues. If they are reissues, they're very early reissues. So I think my oldest record that I have this was originally released in 1956. This is Hank Williams' "Moan in the Moonlight." or sorry, Moan in the Blues, uh, not Moan in the Moonlight. That's a different one. Uh, Moan in the Blues. Uh, so this came out in 1956. It's unclear whether this is a reissue or not, but it does have the checkered, uh, the MGM black and yellow label, which uh, I know the originals had that label. So I think that's an indicator that this is a very early early reissue if not an original so that's 1956 if that doesn't count i've got two other records from 1958 the first is johnny cash sings the songs that's that made him famous this is on the sun label i found this at a yard sale for like four bucks and then the next is buddy holly the uh self-titled debut from him and that is um, on Co the Coral label. This is a UK press. My uncle gave it to me. It was the first record that he ever bought in 1958. Or yeah, both of them from 1958. Okay, next. Uh, a, a record that is your most obscure or weirdest. I had to have a think on this. I think this one's pretty obscure. And I got it just recently from my fiance. This is the songs they sang through two world wars. Uh, side one is World War One. Side two is World War Two. Pretty interesting little historic piece. This is a South African pressing too. Um, yeah, just like an obscure little find that is kind of cool actually. Uh, so that is number three. Number four, the rarest record that you have. I, I have a handful of records that are rare and it's kind of, okay, so what what do you define rare? Is it valuable? Is it something that not a lot of people have? Is it something that people really saw, uh, is very sought after that people actually want? I went with my, from what I can tell, my least collected record in Discogs. You can see how many people have it in Discogs. And this album here, there are, it only has six people in Discogs and actually two of those people are me because I have my personal account and then the account with my fiance. So five people on Discogs have this album. This is Undercurrent 
songs from the under uh, music from the underground this is from 1970 or 71 it's got some pretty cool uh, collection of artists which you can see there on the front um so this is the Canadian pressing. There is a U.S. pressing. I checked the U.S. press. It has 94, 94 people have it on Discogs. This one I actually entered into Discogs myself because there were no, no one else had it, uh, the Canadian pressing, and it just really bothered me. I couldn't, uh, I couldn't go with just adding the American one. I had to add the Canadian one in. So five people on Discogs. That's pretty rare, I think. And then the last one, the most expensive record that you have in your collection. I love showing this one whenever I get a chance. It's a cool story, but this is Bob Dylan debut album, uh, his self-titled debut with the sticker here that says a new star on Columbia Records. This is a uh, promo. This is a demonstration copy. You can see I want to be really delicate with this. You can see on the label here, it says demonstration copy, not for sale. And then on the back, it's also got the stamp demonstration copy, not for sale. I bought this for 40 bucks at my local shop. I don't know what they were thinking in Discogs. There are, I think 84 people have this in Discogs. It is valued at $815. And this is in actually really great shape. So uh, it was definitely a steal at the record show and uh, at the record store. And I, I hope and pray as a collector that I can find more scores like that in my future. So if you guys have a chance, go check out Craig over at the Spirit of Vinyl. Check out his thread. Uh, give his channel a like and a subscribe. Consider liking this video if you enjoyed it. Consider subscribing for more content. And whatever you guys do, make sure you come right back here where Stylus meets vinyl. Thanks, everybody. See you soon. Hopefully soon and not long. <laughs> See ya. Thanks, guys.